Hello boys and girls, Brad the Guitologist here. And in this video, we're going to pull out some old test equipment that's been sitting on my shelves for a little while. This is a 1967 Ico Model 955 in-circuit capacitor tester. Uh, this tester will test from 0.1 microfarad up to about 50 microfarad. And it will test these capacitors, uh, theoretically at least, in circuit. Um, it will test for shorts. You can see right there and open and it has a couple of controls for RC balance and RC range. Uh, you can see here the dial that uh, tests for capacitance. Right now though, this dial is loose and that's because you can see right there it's it's been cracked. You see those three cracks right there. Um, th there's a set screw that gets tightened and uh, that was over tightened at some point or just weakened and that uh, plastic has failed on the back side so we're gonna have to do something to fix that the good news is though for the most part this unit seems to be working when you turn it on uh, it does come on and I've tried it testing a couple of capacitors and it did work and you can see the eye tube here and we'll look a little more closely at it a little bit later but you can see it does actually come on and and appear to try to work condition wise this thing doesn't appear to be too bad it's got some rust and it's really dirty so we'll see if we can clean that up a bit later maybe scrub some of that rust off of there uh, here is the rear of the box you can see it has a serial number of 14001 and you can barely just make out the ico capacitor tester there uh, fuse on the back and you could see inside of there, there's one of the tubes. That's a 6C4 and then the I tube uh, up there. So this thing has two tubes actually. But yeah, let's go ahead and bust this thing open and we'll probably end up uh, recapping it and testing it out. Okay, so to get this ca little cabinet open, we have two screws on the back of the unit. We'll take both of these screws out and the case just slides open. Now you can see there's quite a bit of dirt and grime inside of the case uh, and, and we'll wash all that out later I actually end up taking this thing to the sink and washing it off off camera but uh, you can see how dirty and dusty it is and like i said there's a little bit of rust uh there too on the outside of the case and here's another sticker on the inside that you can't see with the thing closed and uh, it has some numbers there i'm not sure what any of that stuff means there is the ICO labeled 6C4, and it has a 1022 code on it, uh, 752. That is 1967, the 52nd week, so the very end of 1967. Uh, 1022, that's made in Austria. Uh, and that pot right there, also 1967, 51st week. So this thing shipped at the very end of 1967 or early 1968. Now you can see a couple of uh, paper and wax capacitors there. One of them is a large 2 microfarad and we have a 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor. Both of those will need to go as they are paper and wax like I said and very old. It actually turns out that that 2 microfarad capacitor uh, was believe it or not a perfectly good capacitor it tests good later on but i really don't know that from the beginning so i just go ahead and replace it as a matter of course it you know it's almost 60 years old 50 something years old but yeah everything actually looks pretty good in here these were sold as kits uh you could order them to put together yourself actually or you could order them assembled from the factory and they were a little bit cheaper if you ordered them to assemble yourself uh, but this one looks in pretty good shape, so I'm thinking that probably either somebody very accomplished put it together or it was done at the factory. I'm just going to wipe down this indicator. It's got a little bit of grime on it, but it's not too bad. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and wipe down the case as well. This is probably the first time this thing has ever been wiped off in its entire life. I mean, it's a 
functional piece of test equipment, not a uh, museum piece, you know. And on that note, I don't know how much I will end up actually using this thing. It's just uh, the simple fact that it was on my shelf and sort of sitting there. And uh, I had never even busted it out to look at it really closely at all. Um, I got this in a trade, I think. Um, uh, or actually what it was was a liquidation sale of a, a guy on the East Coast. Um, and he, he found this um, lab that was being liquidated of this guy who had passed away. And his widow was taking care of his stuff and trying to get rid of a bunch of it and I think that is how this piece came to me um, I ended up buying a bunch of stuff off of him uh, and uh, the fellow shipped it over to me and yes it's kind of been sitting around ever since you know also the more I was looking at this thing it's got a cute little chassis and kind of a neat little lunchbox head appearance it might be cool to build a little amplifier or something into it at some point down the road if i don't end up using it but i mean it is a it would be a shame um to tear it apart in that way considering it's uh, fully functional and a workable piece of equipment but here i'm just wiping down the tubes and trying to get all the dust off of everything and just you know kind of Kind of spiffy it up a little bit. And now we'll go ahead and pull this eye tube and you'll get a little better look at it. Uh, the screen on the other side there. As I clean it up. You can see the, the display section of the tube. And it is an EM84 or a 6FG6. I have not looked for this tube to see how rare it is or how hard it would be to replace it. I'm assuming that outside of some old test equipment that probably this this tube was not used very much. You didn't really have uh, a lot of eye tubes in things uh, from about 1967 on, you know, so it wouldn't surprise me if there were still a lot of these left out there on the market. But it also wouldn't surprise me if you can't find them. Okay, now that we've gotten everything fairly clean, it's time to get down to the nitty gritty and r restore this thing electrically. Uh, first, we'll chop these couple of capacitors out of here the, at 0 0.05 and that uh, two microfarad. To replace the two microfarad, I'm going to use this pair of one microfarad Tex cap, uh, 1% capacitors at 200 volts they're actually higher rated than they need to be the original was 150 volts and uh, it was non-polarized at 2 microfarad so we're going to use two of these capacitors in parallel to make up our our value that we need uh, also you'll notice there that they're a one percent tolerance capacitor and the original um, was a five percent tolerance so these should actually be a little bit better than what was in there originally, actually. But yeah, since they are new old stock capacitors, I am going to go ahead and test them before I put them in here. I'll be honest, I don't always test new capacitors. Uh, I probably should, but it's just... I usually just slap them in. But you can see it's pretty much spot on there. It's a little, little bit over. But uh, it actually says it's supposed to be 1.08, I think, on the actual capacitor itself. So it's... It's definitely within its 1% tolerance. It has not moved. I don't know how old these capacitors are, and I'm not even sure where I got them, but they are pretty much spot on as far as value. So they should be really great capacitors, and uh, they're nice and sealed as well, which I like that about them, in addition to being spot on on the value. So yeah, here we go wiring these up in parallel. I had actually uh, screwed up at first and I chopped the leads um, in preparation to put them in series. And I don't know what I was thinking. I was just being really stupid. I whiffed on it. I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so I had to actually re-solder the legs on there. If you'll notice, look real closely, you'll see uh, that the legs were chopped and I had to re-solder the legs back on and then do this configuration to get them in parallel. 
but I'm not above mistakes, man. I'm, I never have claimed to be. I just, I try to fix them when I make them, though. The only people who don't make mistakes are Jesus Christ and liars. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's the only two capacitors that we have to change in this thing. So pretty easy recap job on it. Now I'm just going to go through and test the resistors, make sure each one of these resistors is correct. Uh, also, we'll clean and lubricate the pots. I'm going to uh, spray them down first with this contact cleaner, this WD-40 stuff. Also spray the uh, switching. Usually what I do in these situations is I will start with the contact cleaner, which is like an alcohol-based stuff, whatever it is. that I'm not really brand loyal or anything necessarily. Uh, just the stuff that's the cheapest because it's all it has to do is kind of clean the contacts. And, and pretty much all of these sprays are alcohol-based anyway. Um, so it doesn't really matter too much which one you get. In this case, uh, that's WD-40 contact cleaner. Uh, specialty cleaner you can get it just in the automotive section at Walmart or um, O'Reilly's Auto Parts or wherever you want to go to get automotive stuff you can find it there and usually it's pretty cheap I found cans of it um, much cheaper than you'll get a lot of other stuff but I'm, I spray the pots with this cleaner first and that's basically going to clean the pot and then I'll come back later and add the lubricant into these pots and like I said, here I'm just going through and checking each one of these resistors. I just want to make sure that none of them have uh, drifted too high or, or off by more than their specified 20% or whatever they're rated at. Uh, I do find a couple that are about 20% off or so each but nothing really exceeding that number and it did not seem critical so I did leave those couple and I didn't have to change any of the resistors okay now it's time to do something about this knob like I said it's uh, it's cracked and it's not really you can't tighten it onto the shaft of the pot so we have to do something about it but there are these three screws that separate the clear plastic circle from the outside of the knob so we're gonna take these screws out and we'll remove that part and there are those two pieces separated the clear piece and the part that we need to work on so you can get a little better look at it here you see where it's cracked where that set screw has pushed the back side of that plastic and cracked it out so we're gonna have to fill this empty space with something my first thought was to fill it with epoxy glue and let it set up and harden to kind of hold everything there so that you could actually use that set screw but um, we end up trying something a little bit different here all right we're ready to uh, fix this part and i have a little piece of metal in here that was a leg off of one of the capacitors that i replaced i bent it around that circle right there and hope hopefully that will kind of reinforce that a little bit uh, i'm out of epoxy so I'm going to have to do this with hot glue, but I think this is probably going to work. Um, once you get hot glue really dense, it is pretty hard to, to move it. So I think, uh, you know, if you try to squeeze hot glue, it's, it's diff once it sets up, it's difficult to squeeze. I'm going to have to try to do this quick, pretty quickly.
I'm really hoping this ends up working, and if it does, it'll be cool because that'll be another another little trick in my bag of tricks. Okay, so a little while later, and this hot glue is all hardened up and we're ready to try it out. And sure enough, tightening up that set screw now, and it works just fine. Okay, we're gonna do a real quick crash course in how to operate this piece of test equipment. I've got several different values of capacitor out here on the desk. I've got, uh, let's see, I've got 2.2 uh, microfarad, I've got 4.7 microfarad, I've got uh, 10 microfarad, 47 microfarad, even up to 100 microfarad. Here is 0 0.05 microfarad. So we'll test this range of capacitors and see how it goes. I'll show you how um, to test for capacity, test for shorts, test for open. Um, this is actually meant to be an in-circuit tester. Um, and that's where this RC balance control and range uh, come in, is when you're trying to test a capacitor that's in circuit and it's shunted with a, a resistor maybe that's going around it somewhere in the circuit. So what you can do actually is just get your multimeter and, whoops, get your multimeter and measure, you know, from the positive end to the negative end of the capacitor that you want to test and see what the DC resistance is, you know, around that capacitor and that part of the circuit. And then what you'll do is a, a short calculation. So you'll do the value of the capacitor in microfarads. So let's say that it's one microfarad just to make it simple, okay? And let's say that if you test from positive to negative with your multimeter and you're getting a resistance of, let's say, 10K. Okay, so uh, 10K times one, that's 10K. And this me these measurements on the RC balance control right here are um, are actually in kilo ohms. So when you see, you know, the 7.5, that's 7.5K, that's 8K, that's 9K, 10K, etc. So what you would expect to see is uh, an RC balance, you should be able to set that control right there to 10 when you're checking the capacitance or somewhere, you know, right in that sort of range right there when this is set to 7 to infinity when we're on that range. It's the outside range. Uh, you can see the 10 right there. So you, you would expect somewhere right in there is where uh, you're going to be able to get this indicator to uh, indicate as far closed as it can go. That will tell, will tell you the actual capacitance of that capacitor taking into account that shunt resistance around it. So this is a way f to measure in circuit a capacitor without having to pull the capacitor out of circuit and to be able to account for the DC uh, resistance, shunt resistance around it. Um, so that's what you're looking at here. Basically, it's a piece of test equipment that allows you to test capacitors in circuit. Hence the name, in circuit capacitor tester model 955. This is the manual for it. And I would recommend if you own one of these, definitely download the manual. It's got the schematic. Um, it's got all the build notation. Um, at least this one does that I found. And I'll put a link down in the description for the uh, where you can download this. The last part of this is actually all the construction booklet. So if you got one of these back in the day, it would have come with um, the construction booklet as well as the user manual. The user manual's got some uh, good information, but just to break it down here, we're gonna make it kind of as simple as possible. Um, this thing has some capabilities. Um, if you wanna do some math, uh, you can find things like power factor, um, dissipation, uh, for the capacitors and stuff like that if you want to do the math um, but I will refer you to the manual if you want to find that stuff out but just for simple testing um, I'll show you how to use this so the first thing you do when you approach the tester is you want to short these leads and you want to put the test on short right here um, and then you want to adjust the line adjust setting we're gonna adjust the line setting until this gap basically closes without overlapping. So you can see if I close it all the way, you can see a little bit of overlap, um, but we're gonna back it off until it just starts to open up and it's no longer overlapping. So it's about right, about right there. 
that's that's full all the way across without overlapping so that's where our line adjust is correct uh, now we can decouple these and we're ready to test a capacitor so let's start out with the uh, I'll tell you what let's just start with the lowest one we have here which is a 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor. Now this is actually below the stated capability on the scale so we'll see if it can measure it nonetheless. We'll see what it kind of looks like. So we've got this clipped in. We're going to change this over to capacity. First of all we can tell already that it's not shorted because this is staying open. We could even go over here to open and you can see how that is closed together so the capacitor is uh, it's, it's not it's not open there is some capacitance there if we go to capacity <clears throat> uh, we should be able to turn this almost all the way down and yeah you can see you can see the line overlaps itself right here when it's somewhere down here at the bottom of the scale now we can't really get very accurate with it because um, it just it's just not that accurate of a piece of test equipment but it'll get, it'll get you roughly in the ballpark so right around in here somewhere is, is where that capacitor is seems to be uh, testing correct and that's you know it's a 0 0.05 so that looks about right let's go on to something a little bit bigger so we can get up here on the actual scale so this is a 2.2 microfarad and we'll clip this one in okay and the black lead goes to the negative if you're um, looking at electrolytics so actually the RC balance uh, if you don't know the uh, shunt resistance or the uh, equivalent series resistance of the capacitor itself if you haven't measured that and you don't know what it is just set the range the RC range from 7 to infinity and then set the uh, RC balance control all the way up and uh, here in a little bit we'll back down and see if we can't get this to close more but first what we want to do is get this to close as much as we can and we'll test the capacitor like this. This is a 2.2 so we'd expect it to go somewhere in 2.2 but I'm just gonna kinda test it like this so you can see it it's open down here on the bottom and then it closes at some point and then opens back up right so at some point it is as closed as it possibly can go and it's somewhere right the overlap is brightest somewhere right in here and that's precisely where we would expect to see it. It's right on about 2.2 microfarad. Uh, now we come here to the RC balance and we can back this down. And you can see it's only opening. It's not actually closing it any further. And as far as, uh, from my reading of the manual, that's telling me that the, um, uh, the series resistance of this capacitor is very, very low it's almost non it's 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 almost in infinite in other words it's a very high excuse me that's a great capacitor and it should be it's brand new and these are all new with the exception of that first one I tested okay so this one is a 4.7 microfarad we'll hook it up and see where we land and again we would expect it to be somewhere up in here around 5 and you see it's open it's open down here on the bottom of the scale if I go up to the top of the scale it opens back up so somewhere here in the middle you can see it is it is the brightest it's gonna be at any point and it appears that it is somewhere right about in here and we're looking at a just over four microfarad yeah just over four microfarad so if we back this down we can actually get that to brighten up a little bit uh, keep your eye right here on this so when I've got it set all the way up it looks like it looks like it's the um, the most overlapped right in here just above four but if I start backing this down you can see this overlap is getting brighter so if I back it down a little bit it's looking like the brightest overlap maybe is a little bit higher than I thought you can see it brightening up 
and dimming down when I'm turning this like this. So somewhere right here in the middle, right around there, uh, that's the actual equivalent uh, series resistance. Okay, so this is actually giving me the ESR measurement, more or less, here if I wanted to do the math. So it's on 30, okay? The reading is, it's a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. So if I wanted to do some division, I could do 30 divided by 4.7 equals 6.3. So that's 6.3K. So the uh, ESR of this little capacitor right here is about 6.3K. That's the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor. You with me so far? Okay, so here's the next one. We're going to go ahead and set this control all the way back up. And we'll test this one here. This one is a 10 microfarad, so we expect it to end up around somewhere up around 10. But I'm just going to basically sweep through and you can see once again we go wide open and then then we close and then we open up again right so somewhere in the middle there is where it's going to land so where it is brightest is def is right there at 10 bang on 10 bang on 10 if i turn this RC balance down, uh, this does not brighten up, which tells me that the, uh, the ESR, there is really no ESR for this capacitor. It's kind of approaching infinite. It's not, uh, it's, it, it doesn't brighten up down here when I try to turn it. Yeah, it's, it's not overly leaky, put it that way. I'm going to hook this one up. This is a 47 microfarad. Okay, we've got our, we've got this set all the way up. And once again, you notice... When I turn it all the way up, this is past the measurable range. You can see it's open again. Turn it down. It closes and then reopens. So, so again, somewhere here in the middle, we're going to have our brightest. And it is definitely its brightest right around here. Right around 50 where we would expect to see it the brightest. And now we'll come here and we'll turn down the RC balance and see if we can't get that brighter. If it starts to brighten up, when I'm measuring out a circuit like this, if it starts to brighten up, that's telling me that there that this capacitor has some sort of uh, ESR reading. Okay? So there is an equivalent series resistance reading for the capacitor. If, there, if it's basically uh, an open, if it's measuring open, okay, see, it's, it's not shorted in any way. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to test one more. This is a 100 microfarad capacitor. And this uh, scale, it's supposed to stop at 50. It's a 0.1 through 50 microfarad. But I've actually successfully been measuring these uh, 100 microfarad capacitors. So if we hook this up, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. And if I... It's going to be hard to see, but this, but it brightens up and then it dims back down near the top of the range. So I'm definitely reaching a point here where it is accurately measuring this capacitor. And it is somewhere, somewhere right in there. Somewhere right in there, but you can see it's kind of, it's off the scale. You can see there that it's actually off the scale, but if I wanted to get a marker and just and mark that position right there and measure this to make sure it's it, it is 100 microfarad, and if it was bang on, if I found one that's bang on, I measure it and I'm uh, come up here and mark it, then I'll know where the 100 should be. But if you look at this, everything kind of gets real close together. If it goes from 10 to 15, and it very quickly goes up to 20. See, it takes this far to go from 10 to 15. And then it only takes this far to go from 15, uh, 15 to 20. And then it goes from 20 all the way to 50 in this amount of time. So that looks about right if, if we're scaling it on up to the 100. So that's about where 100 is. Like I said, if I wanted to mark that at 100, then I would uh, be able to measure 100s. But I'll, I'll just know that from 
from now on. But that's essentially how you use this piece of equipment. Uh, again, first thing you want to do is adjust the line adjust. Uh, so that the measurements will be correct. If you're measuring a capacitor out of circuit, it's relatively simple. You just turn the RC balance and everything all the way up, uh, assuming that there's going to be uh, no major ESR because if it's a new capacitor, it shouldn't have any. Um, and just to test that, we'll test this old capacitor that I pulled out of here. This one is a 2 microfarad, 150 volts, uh, plus, plus or minus 5%, but it's very old. It's paper and wax, and we'll see how leaky it might be. I mean, I pulled it out of the circuit, assuming that it's probably, probably leaky. Um, but we're out on capacity test. Uh, we got it hooked up. We're going to have to come down here to about 2 microfarad. Probably. And yes, indeed, he do. It's right in here. Right in here. It's about, it's reading about maybe 2.2, 2.3, something like that. And I think that's actually what it was when I measured it on the fluke earlier. It was about the same. If I start turning this down. It does not brighten up. This actually is not very leaky. The, the, this capacitor is not a very leaky capacitor. It's actually probably a good capacitor and could have stayed in here. I mean, that's why the thing was actually working when I first fired it up. Who knows how long that would last, but uh, for now at least it is a good capacitor. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video on this. Uh, this is actually a 1967 Ico. 955 in circuit capacitor tester. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, hit subscribe. And for now, we'll see y'all later.